Okay, so continuing the last example of a binomial distribution. Again, suppose that 80% of students surveyed live within five miles of South Seattle College. And if six students are selected at random, answer the following questions. So I have uh, five questions here, three about probability, and then the last two about the mean and the standard deviation of this distribution. Um, we're gonna go into these parts of the problem in a few minutes, but we first need to show that it's a binomial distribution um, and set up the binomial distribution PDF table. Um, luckily, we've already done that, so I'll just flip through. You know, we fill in the template. There are six students, the probability of success, 0 0.80, probability of failure, 0 0.20, and X is the number of students who live within five miles. So that's a binomial distribution with N6 and P0.8, and again in Excel, binomial dot distribution, um, where cumulative is false. So we generate our table, and we see the outcomes, the possible outcomes for x, all possible values of x from 0 to 6. So I had to fill in the 0 through 6, by the way, and then the probabilities we got, just like we did in the last video, using uh, this function in Excel. So I won't do that again. Um, we will just go on to answering these questions um, using the table. So the first one is, what's the probability that a student lives that exactly two students live within five miles. So that's the probability that x equals two, and I can use the table to figure that out. So the probability that x equals two from the table is 0 0.154, and that's our answer for part A. Mm, 0 0.0154. Part B says, what is the probability that at most two with, live within five miles? And in that problem, what we're really asking is, you know, what do I mean by at most? Um, at most two means up to and including two. So zero, one, or two. Or if you're thinking about an inequality, that's the probability that X is less than or equal to two. And I can add those three probabilities. 0 0.0001 plus 0 0.0015 plus 0 0.0154, and we get 0 0.017. Usually we take these values to four decimal places. It's not necessary, but just be careful, in, and that one did not round, but um, it rounded less than four, but I added a zero. Um, maybe be careful in Excel what or in WAMAP what it wants. Um, for your own work, I would say four decimal places is the best to use. Um, so again, that answer is 0, 17 percent, or I'm sorry, 1.7 percent, 0 0.0170 is the probability that at most two live within five miles. Um, the next part says, what's the probability no more than two live within five miles? And if you think about no more than two, well, more than two would be three, four, five, or six. So no more than two, again, it's the same three values uh, from zero to one to two. Um, so we could do this the same way and add those three values up, or we could use in Excel, the binomial distribution function again, but with the cumulative value being true. So I'll show you how to do that in Excel. Um, maybe I'll come right here and I'll go equals, uh, cap lock on, binomial distribution, and the number of successes is gonna be two, so x is less than or equal to two, Number of trials is still six. Probability of success, still 80%. And now cumulative, I'm gonna type all caps true. Tab, and I should, should get the same answer I got before. Well, you can actually see here, it's the answer is actually 0 0.1696. But if I round that to four decimal places, 0 0.170. 
0 0.0170 as we got before. So again, what we changed here is this is X's the cumulative distribution. So that cumulative word got changed from false to true. And that is going to add everything up to and including the, the successes that I put in the beginning of the formula. So the two here. So be adding these three cells up, which we did manually already. But you could imagine if you had to add a bunch of stuff manually. Um, well, you wouldn't, you would use Excel. So <laughs> you can either just add them up or you can use Excel. And the answer again, 0 0.0170. Okay, the last two questions ask about the mean and the standard deviation. Um, and we're gonna use formulas. So the mean for a probability distribution that is binomial. So in general, what we can do is we can ha have a third column in Excel and multiply the first two columns together and then add them up and that will be the mean. So let me just do that so you can see how that works. So this column would be x times probability of x. And I would just say here equals, click on the first value of x and then times its probability. This is a little shorter here for us. And then I can drag that down. So we could do this for any probability distribution function to find the mean. And then take the sum of those values. I'll just drag this one over because I know that's the sum already. So that mean is 4.8. Um, again, I'm multiplying the first two columns, the, the value of x times its probability, and then adding them up to get the mean. Okay, um, and then, you know, if you wanted to make this look a little better, you could have a uniform number of decimal places, maybe four, something like that. Okay, um, but for a binomial distribution, which we've already established that this is, we can also use this formula, the mean is the same as n times p. So in our case, n is 6, and p is 0 0.8. So we just multiply those together, 6 times 0 0.80, and we get 4.8. And it's 4.8 what? Well, who are we, you know, what are we questioning here? We're asking, we, stu we surveyed students. So the mean is 4.8 students. We don't want to forget the units, uh, really, of both mean and standard deviation. Um, and the second question says, what is the standard deviation? And again, because we're in a binomial distribution, we have a formula for that. So the standard deviation is the Greek letter sigma. So lowercase sigma looks like that. And it's the square root of n times p times q. So I'll just do that calculation. I can do it in Excel equals the square root 6 times 0 0.80 times 0 0.20. And it's 0 0.98. And again, the units on that would be 0 0.98 students. Um, and then finally, the problem in its entirety is kind of given here again. I can show it all. We first had to establish this was a binomial distribution um, by satisfying the three conditions. And then that tells us what n and p are, 6 and 0.8. Then really, the three probability problems are about translating what they're asking into mathematical symbols. So the first one was that x equals 2. That comes right off the table. The next two were a less than or equal to, two ways of saying it. At most, 2 or no more than 2. Both ended up being x is less than or equal to 2. One of them I found by adding the things in the table up. The other I found by using the cumulative distribution, changing the cumulative value to true. And then the last two parts, uh, we used the formulas for a binomial distribution for the mean, mu equals n times p, and the standard deviation, sigma equals n times p times q in the square root. Okay, so I might do another one more example of a different binomial distribution, but uh, this should get us through uh, binomial distributions in general. And notice how closely we use Excel because that's what's actually doing the computations for us. Again, we could do those by hand as I did in the PowerPoint presentation, but generally once we understand um, that it's, you know, it's a combination and 
um, we could do that. We could do the calculations, but we might as well just let the technology do it for us. Uh, then the work really boils down to establishing that you have a binomial distribution, which is, I will go us back to this template. Uh, all the underlying things are the things that it's your job to fill in uh, when you have a binomial distribution before you start to answer the probability questions. And again, I'll leave with this last page highlighted in case you want to pause the video and uh, take notes on that.